So good afternoon, everybody, and and thank you to the uh, organizers for inviting me again to to backstage. Um, it, it, it's great to be here because so many uh, open source conferences are technical, and I'm I'm sorry to say I'm, I'm a normal lawyer, and we don't really understand many technical things, but we do get involved in open source as you can imagine because of all this licensing um, going on. Um, today, what I wanted to look at is is uh, actually some of the more recent nearly open source licenses, which are, have become a little bit a creative amount of noise in the community um, because of the restrictions they're having on commercial use mainly, um, which has come up with the Commons Clause, with um, uh, with the Mongo SSPL um, Clause, with Redis and, and, and various other licenses, uh, which have moved away from what, what we've normally seen in the community as open source and or free software with the complete freedom to use, to modify, adapt, and share. And, uh, and these licenses create a lot of noise and still create a certain amount of noise um, and discussion in, in the community, in the open source space. Uh, and it's, I think it's interesting just to run through a little bit of what, what they're about and, and, and speak more to, to what, what motivates these, these, these changes and what impact they're having on, on, on open source or on the projects themselves. Okay, so so you know uh, the main argument is 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 really um, to to protect the value of of an open source project such as Mongo or Elastic in in, in there, and that, that these changes are required because uh, other players um, such as the big uh, platforms were taking advantage and not um, playing the open source game. So uh, it's it's interesting to to see if actually this is um, a useful thing, a good thing, a bad thing. Uh, um, is it something we have to live with? Um, is it something that, that is going to be detrimental to the open source community as a whole? Uh, often it's been called the, the slippery slope as, as projects um, move from, from real free software, open source software, to um, you know, available, not for commercial use um, software, which is we're seeing more and more of actually, but not in the open source space, more in the academic. Okay, so... so um, I don't want to bore you with the details, but actually, we am going to show you some licensed text. I'm sorry about that. Um, the devil is in the details, uh, as as anybody knows who've discussed uh, the scope of copyleft on GPL two or the impact of of, of cloud copyleft in the Afero GPL. Um, actually, how something is written and uh, what it says in, in actual detail is important. And though I don't want to you know, kind of like bore you to death and make you all turn off. If you actually see see some of these clauses, I think it's important just to run through, at least to have them on the screen, so we can I can comment them, and then maybe you know take up some questions, uh, to see what this is about. So the, the first the, the, this really first thing happened. I mean, I don't need to go into the precepts of open source freedom to use without restrictions, freedom to modify, freedom to share, freedom to share your modifications, um, without restrictions at least in terms of fields of use. You know whether it's commercial, non-commercial, whether it's military, whether it's religious, whether it's and we can't you know medical. The whole principle of freedom is is that you can't put restrictions on it. Okay, copyleft was seen as a kind of restriction, but it's not. Copyleft itself is a mechanism to maintain the freedom for people down the chain, so it doesn't actually prevent you using the software in any manner whatsoever. Okay, so the first of these. Um, changes was was the commons clause and this was put together back in 2017 um, beginning of 18 um, by a group of uh, open source projects which worked in the cloud space cloud infrastructure space and saw that the big platforms were taking advantage or using their heavily using their open source software as part of the cloud infrastructure so databases management security whatever um, and we're not playing the open source community game. So they, they, they were making improvements, not feeding them back to the community. And there's this feeling that the, the platforms were making huge amounts of money by offering um, the services of the software through the platform. Um, money which was, wasn't going back, you know, in the virtuous circle to feed into community management, improving security, um, or whatever. Um, but was staying in the hands of those platforms. So what, what the, they uh, came up with is a is not a, a kind of like a closed source or a, a platform restricted um, license, but they just had an add on clause that said, well, this is under the Apache, or, or this is under the GPL, but it also has this additional clause. It was called the Commons clause, 
And basically what it did is it, it had this fairly wide prohibition that says, you know, you cannot sell the software, which, will, as, as we know, is, is goes completely against the, 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 the freedom of, of, of any open source software, which says you can do what you want with this code, um, provided you comply with certain, um, you know, management in cop license, you know, copyright notices or whatever. So, and, and then the license itself went defined, well, what does sell mean? And, and it was here, obviously, is um, it was providing the actual software for a fee. But then it also went much wider than that. It was also actually providing hosting services because that's what they were aiming at, not just because you could get around providing the software for a fee by saying, well, I'm not providing the software. I'm putting it on the cloud and I'm providing the hosted services. So they, they added the concept of hosting services uh, for a fee, uh, but also then consulting and support services um, uh, for, for, um, in a commercial basis. So this was really, really wide. It was seen as very wide. Um, on top of the fact it was obviously seen as not open source, okay, um, and 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 shook up the community quite a lot uh, because they're saying, well, what's what's happening here? Why, why suddenly are we seeing, you know, Mong MongoDB uh, and another uh, uh, software suddenly adding on this clause? Um, and and although admittedly, obviously, they're saying this is not open source anymore, but uh, you know, we're trying to play the open source game, but have this kind of like non-commercial license added to it and this caused quite a, this has caused quite a lot of hassle and and the, the concept looking at the devil you know the detail um well one can understand you know there's the trying to prevent free riding and that the, these big platforms taking advantage of you know good quality software created by the community and not contributing back either in code which is what one really wants uh, or in some type of financing to financing uh, community activities um the problem we have, if you look at it, it actually is quite. There's quite a lot of ambiguous wording here, and this is where you know, obviously, that that wherever there's uncertainty, um, the lawyers go and say, "Well, don't touch it because we don't really know what it means." Um, if you look at the, the actual wording itself, it says, "A product or service whose value derives entirely or substantially from the functionality of the software." That that that's really vague, uh, you know, and and you know, if you if you're a database at the back end of a platform. Uh, and you're providing some, you know, let's say, warehouse management software, and you're using the database, you know, as a SaaS. Uh, are you providing the software, and is does my warehouse management software derive significant value from the database in the back end? Um, difficult to say. Okay, so there's not, that, that's that's difficult to use, and unfortunately, as most people know, as soon as we don't really know what it means, or if we think it's vague. Uh, certainly, business, but also many other communities don't really like it. Okay, the other the other thing, obviously, was that but this was a big change in the community in the open source space, and uh, it created all sorts of uh, legal incompatibilities if you're going to be working with this type of code. Um, and actually, from the from the project side itself, uh, it would require them to police to 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 make sure to enforce um, that the platforms are not using uh, or people are not selling the software. And that, that really takes it into proprietary world because that's what the proprietary software does. Anyway, so this was used for a while um, and actually then they moved away because it was seen as a little bit vague and not helpful, but it was like a, like a first warning that, that something was happening. Um, what Mongo did actually, um, that they came up with the SSPL, the server-side public license, um, which again was uh, a way of trying to put a break or, or prevent cloud uh, infrastructures from 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 taking advantage but in, instead of having the that the 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 prohibition against selling um what they said well no no, no we're going to have an ultra copy lift what we're going to say is if you use the program um uh as 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 part of a, a hosted infrastructure then not just my this is making available this is giving access to the the end user and uh, just like the Afero GPL, which says that in this scenario, nearly, you've got to give access to the source code to the end user. This was much wider. This says not just the source code of my program, but all the cloud infrastructure management um, uh, software. So they mentioned it here. You can see in the second paragraph, management software, user interfaces, application program interfaces, automation monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea was is that the copyleft of my license should catch 
the, the, inf the cloud infrastructure uh, management software. So that must be made available to give freedom to the user, to the end users. The end user, instead of being having his or her hands tied in a cloud, they can say, well, I can replicate this because I now have access to all the source code of the cloud and I can build my own private cloud. Okay, which is, you know, which is one of the precepts of, 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 of free software, you know, of the copyleft access. Trouble is, it, it goes a bit beyond what one would normally expect of a copyleft, you know, which is related to my specific code and derivative works of my code. That's if you make a, a work based on my code, like the GPL copyleft. So this goes much further. Um, and and it was a bit like a poison pill, you know. So it was, if you use my database, be careful because if if my database is the prime functionality and all you're really doing is passing on the functionalities, then uh, then the whole your whole cloud's going to have to go uh, open as well. Okay. So that was it's a bit similar to the Affero. Um, the difference with the Affero is that the Affero actually only relates to if if you take Affero GPL code and modify it, you create an improved version, and you make that. That, that software itself available. So, for example, if we took a Grafana, Grafana, you know, the, the, the data viewer visualization software, if I improved Grafana itself and made it available to third parties on the web, then probably I'd have to give an offer to give access to my improvements on Grafana. You know, that's the idea of, of copyleft. Um, but Mongo was arguing, yeah, but if my database is in the background, the user is actually not interfacing with my database, it's interfacing with some front end. On the on the cloud server, and and therefore my Affero GPL doesn't work. I, I can't force the cloud uh, structures to to make available my code or any improvements on my code. Okay, so with Mongo uh, Mongo saw the uh, the Affero I think uh, as, to, as not strong enough or not didn't work to to prevent this free riding. Okay, so so but but as you look at the wording here, it's really wide because it's not just if you modify Mongo, it's also actually if you just use it. As part of your cloud infrastructure, and provide it as a principal functionality, as a database in the cloud. Okay, and as I said, the the, the copyleft obligations go much way beyond uh, just Mongo. It's, it's everything everything that manages Mongo in, in in that way. Okay, so there's no real prohibition on commercial use, which is which is good because obviously it's it's uh, you know that goes against the philosophy of of the open source space. Um, but it does extend um, beyond what, what one would expect. And there's, there's lots of questions about whether the server-side public license is open source. And it was submitted to the OSI, uh, but we're then withdrawn. So, so, you know, there's no definitive decision about that. Okay. So in practice, what does it, Mongo, uh, was our license mean? And, and this is just my interpretation. Okay. I'm not legal advice, as I'd like to say. Um, obviously, internal use is fine. You know, using Mongo internally, that's no problem at all. You're not exposing it to any, any third party, just like using any GPL or a federal GPL code uh, internally uh, for, for your own platform. If you're using it to offer as a cloud service, um, as a database for, for you know, for, for a data management platform, for you know energy management, or, or or school classroom management, or whatever it is, then obviously this this doesn't um, apply either because you're not offering a database service in the cloud. Okay, but so so what it does try to catch is is the, the the cloud platforms, you know, the big clouds like Google, Amazon, all these other ones, offering Mongo as as a service, so it's as a service, and that's what it tries to catch. So, so there's been lots of discussion. Is oh, if I use Mongo now, does does my whole platform have to become SSPL? And and I would argue, well, it depends on the circumstances. It depends on what you're doing. But generally speaking, and the and the FAQs of of Mongo itself, and um, say that say that this is this is not a problem. Okay, not going to cause it. What else happened? Well, Redis was also um, uh, Apache plus the Commons clause, and and then it, it stepped back. From 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 it, but it stayed in 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 what I would say the red zone in in the proprietary or the closed uh, or certainly not open so because uh, Red, Redis is again an, another um, software used in many cloud infrastructures, and um, the core of Redis is is BSD three, three clause BSD no problem totally open source permissive okay, so what it said is well we've got actually quite exciting extensions and plugins um, which we build for for Redis. And what we're trying to do is to actually stop uh, cloud infrastructure providers from uh, taking using these uh, for, for a commercial purpose. Um, so what they did is they went back, they had this source available. So the philosophy is Redis is available, the core is under open source, 
the rest of it is available so, so you can use it. And anybody who's not providing uh, hosted Redis uh, can use it quite cheerfully, you know, use, adapt, modify. But if you are a database product and offering that database product to third parties, um, then then you're caught, and then um, this is not allowed. Okay, so and there's a, in the in the boxes here you can see what they mean by by database products. It's obviously, a database itself, database engine, but it's it's wider than that. You know, we've got search engine, stream processing, machine learning uh, engines. So it's it's actually quite a lot more than just being a, a standard database or providing Redis vanilla flavor standard services. Okay, um, and it's also actually any any interfaces that interface with the Redis those plugins because it says a product or service exposing the, the, the Redis a APIs. Okay, so again, the justification is 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 um, to prevent third parties using these in a way that they see as not good for the community, not not good and not good for the company, which obviously is is, is, is an important consideration. Okay, this is because the AGPL again in this circumstance did not seem to protect them and did not um oblige third parties to, to share their improvements okay so <clears throat> this this was another another one that's out there elastic is probably the most well known now um because elastic was so successful and and is still very successful okay so elastic license um is also again in the red zone it's it has these prohibitions which open source and free software don't allow um and and it says here you know prohibitions you may not provide the software as a hosted or managed service so again, this is a much more general. It's not not, not a database product like Redis, but it's it's a um, a hosted uh, service. So it's again elastic as, as such as as a as a service, <clears throat> and, and so we're using a substantial set of the features. So again, you you could probably use it as as something very minor in your code on the hosted platform. But if you're actually providing search as a service, or elastic search as a service, then you're caught by this. Okay, you can't do that. And also, in fact, they added a standard proprietary software code protections because you know often when proprietary code is is distributed it has some form of license key activation key which which by law it's illegal to 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 circumvent okay as well as obviously the contractual uh, prohibition and so they added this and and, and elastic may, may or may not i don't know this is something to discuss if they do have license keys in in in, in their code but obviously you know that would be illegal to circumvent that okay so so elastic um like redis is not not copyleft style it's more straight prohibition um, um it also actually one of the things they've got really 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 cross about and this is an in, interesting to discuss in the next talk about trademarks is that they their their branding was taken off the 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 the, the front end of the service by by the platforms and 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 provided under a different name and that that's called passing off in in law um and it's there's a big debate in the community whether the the free software uh, rights the rights to use to modify include a right to actually modify it by taking away the trade name the brand name okay so there's there's a debate there and that was something that they wanted to prohibit so that's why they have the third step of this which is it's just, it's prohibited to remove um, notices copyright notices and other notices okay so anyway that's just an example and these ones um these uh, there are other kind of cloud uh, databases or cloud services which are using this gray log uses this the sspl time scale um is similar to uh, probably elastic is closest is basically you can't sell time scale as a service um confluent uh has a non-compete which is a bit strange you know you, you, and and uh, well, it's wider it's both you can't provide confluent code which is available source. You can access the code, you can use it, whatever, distribute it. But you can't provide it as a software, as a service to third parties. Because that goes against the Confluent you know, business model, which is to sell Confluent as a service and platform as a service. Okay, And actually here, it has expressly this non-compete clause, which is don't compete with Confluent. Okay, So you can all relax now. That's We're not going to look at licenses anymore. <laughs> um, Oh, well, we can go back to talking about it and the devil in the details, as I say. Um, but the, I, I think more interesting in, in, in this scope of, of FOSS Backstage is, is w w what impact has had this had in the community? And, and um, you know, open source is, 
it is not about licenses. And, and, and I keep repeating this because people come to me and say, oh, you're an open source expert. I said, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm a licensing expert. Open source, you speak to the guys who actually write, write code, who participate in big communities and do governance and they go to Hackfest or whatever. I, I just, I'm a mechanic. Uh, I do the licensing for them. And licensing is just an instrument to help open source be a strong community um, with open collaboration. Okay, with different flavors, as we know, and permissive, copyleft, we copyleft, whatever. Um, so, so I think it's interesting not just to see these as, as these you know, these restrictions as a license, but to look at them in a wider context as what they're doing to the to the open source community. And and, and obviously the, the the first you know maybe exaggerated uh, uh, criticism is that this is a first step in the wrong direction. You know, it's taking some key or important. Um, valuable uh, shared uh, good, which you know, like Mongo and, and, and other other good um, community software, and, and pushing it into the obviously moving towards the, the proprietary space. So that's obviously not good for the community as a whole, not good for the, the, the and I mean, you know, the communities because actually there's lots of open source communities. There's not one, um, uh, but everybody has their own right. You know, the whole, whole concept of freedom actually is. To, to be free to to choose your your community model, your business model, your licensing model. So obviously, you now Mongo and Elastic and these people have absolute right, um, so long as they are respecting other people's rights. But um, they have an absolute right to do this. Um, what they can't obviously say is that they are now strong members of the open source community because they're not. Uh, with a question mark about Mongo because there's server side public license uh, could. Just about be seen as an open source license, I think. Uh, um, although uh, we can discuss this a little bit, but I think the extension of of Mongo to other software it goes against the open source definition, which has one that says your license must not affect other technologies and other licenses. Okay, well we can discuss that. But so, but I mean, obviously these these entities, these these communities have seen it really important to protect the value that they have worked really hard for many years. Uh, against free riding, and and they've seen this as a, you know, a mechan a legal mechanism to solve um, a sustainability problem, uh, and and there's there's a argument about that because I mean you know so many look at the extreme GNU Linux okay I know no software projects is like GNU Linux kernel it's it's a bit of a special case but I mean there's so much commercial use. Of, of Linux kernel and in, in, in Linux um, in, in every single uh, environment, sector of the economy, whatever. But but Linux has not gone towards, you know, Linux uh, kernel has not gone towards, um, uh, you know, any form of, you know, cloud prohibitions or sector prohibitions. And, and it's a thriving community. So uh, I, it's probably a bad example, counter example, because it's a bit of an exception. But I mean, there are other big communities like the Apache community. Again, Apache software is everywhere, um, and and it's and it, but it's look, it's found other sustainability mechanisms, you know, through sponsorship, through quality of coding, through having a large community who who participate actively because it's it's great for their curriculums, for the for you know for going to see companies or being a consultant. You know, so I'm, I'm a member of the Apache community, um, so so there are. Other ways of defending, uh, if it's purely economic basis, the sustainability of, of the of, of the project. Um, there are some people who use the, the license, uh, you know, the, the the trademark as a means of maintaining coherency and uh, a community together. So I'm not I'm not I'm not convinced personally that actually um, this type of uh, non-commercial restriction is is strictly necessary but then you know i'm obviously not in the mongo elastic redis uh, communities or, or companies so, so so i'm just seeing it from outside and, and from a community point of view but what it has done is, is it's forced people well certainly the cloud providers have uh, stopped using these and actually what they do is they just re-engineer it and they make their own uh, you know imitation of elastic search or, or whatever it is and they use other databases um, okay, so so that that's I think uh, one of the aspects is sustainability and is it required? Um, the other one is 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 it, is it is it fragmenting our community? Is it is it you know causing stress, tension, friction? Um, I think in a way yes, because people have moved some a lot of open source developers have moved away from working with these projects, which is a bad thing because obviously they lose adoption, they lose users. 
but, um, but but not everybody, of course not. They're very successful and very good quality um, projects. So still, so, yeah, very used in 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 commercial and non-commercial settings. Okay, but I mean, what we've been trying to do in the licensing space over the last fifteen years is to remove the fragmentation of all these licenses which are incompatible. And adding more licenses, which are actually you know, outside the open source space, just just makes it even more of a headache for for um, building and designing and uh, um, software solutions. Uh, um, so I, 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 you know, again, that, that I think is is, been, is a downside to that. Okay. So I mean, just, just cutting this to the quick, and then maybe the questions in the um, in the um, in the chat. Oh, obviously, you know, there are some of these licenses not open source. And when I say, you know, not really open source, it's, it's, really, open. it's really not open source. Um, you know, the Commons Clause is, has a commercial restriction. Redis and Elastic have, have uh, restrictions. Okay. Um, so, so, but it's creating a kind of like an, a, another area of, of shared code in available source. And I'm seeing that quite a lot, actually, in, in academic um, people sharing. They share, they like to have these kind of academic non-commercial licenses where they, they're the science and scientists are happy to share code um, with other scientists um, to, to, to improve and everything. But then they, they're not really jumping into the open source concept of saying, well, this is fully open source and let's, let's, let's no, go for it. Okay. Um, I think this appeal is halfway there, and uh, it's it's quite a clever solution um, without having these red light commercial restrictions. But 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 it, it, and I, I know quite a lot of companies who don't really want to use Mongo because um, it's it's caused them you know they have to consult the lawyers, which as a lawyer I always think is a good thing. But for them it's obviously a, a transaction cost, it's friction, yeah, and it's hassle, um, and they don't want to do that. So so. It's it's um, caused caused headaches, uh, but maybe it's just you know transition period and some other form of database is going to come up there with a permissive or standard copyleft license, I'm not going to cause so much hassle. Okay, so I think that that's really what, where what what did I want to say is is that uh, this is a recent thing. It may be just a fad. Maybe just you know while cloud and platforms of services is, is is becoming you know the norm. Um, it's the beginning of standard division that you've got real open source and you've got available source that has these cloud restrictions. Um, I, I know that there are cloud uh, endeavors in Europe, especially cloud infrastructures, which are building alternatives to the commercial, open source alternatives to the commercial uh, vendors, and which are mainly American, I think, but but others as well. And and they're looking for a full open source stack. To give the to give the freedom to the user and avoid any form of even cloud vendor lock-in, which is one of the important things of, of the um, it. And there we go. That's that's what I want to say. And thank you very much for being with me. Um, and I'm happy to take some questions. Okay. Uh, thank you, Malcolm, for your talk. Um, maybe we can uh, have one question from the audience. And uh, I don't know if you already covered this in your presentation when you talked about the SSPL, but the question here in uh, the audience was SSPL and everyone getting the source code. Do you know of anybody else worried about uh, the everyone part versus the users get the source code uh, approach of the AJPL? No, that, that's that's one of the whole reason why Mongo went for the SSPL because it extends beyond, because I think one of the big arguments is, is to do with, uh, I'm a lawyer again, so I'm talking about things I'm not really an expert, the architecture of, of cloud infrastructures and cloud services is there's there's a front end, which is the, the, the face towards the user where all there's an intelligence and whatever happening uh, in the user interface. And that's where the, the user is connecting to and using those functionalities. And then often that will connect with the back end, uh, database management, security management, anything that's in the back end. And I think Mongo's analysis was, was that the, the Afero GPL only covers any software in the front end, which is why I use Grafana as an example, because I'm pretty sure Grafana is only used as a, as a front end. Okay, so it, you know, the users really interact with Grafana because we, we look, we visualize the data, we see that what they're doing. Okay, whereas Mongo is hidden in the back end. And, and there's arguments to say, well, no, the user does not ever connect with Mongo. It's the, it's the front end which indirectly then connects with the back end for using data management. Okay, so so that's where a fellow fell, 
um, uh, failed to to answer their their needs. Okay, in the, in the users were not getting access to the improved versions of of Mongo that was being offered by by the platforms. Okay, um, and and I think they've been quite clever in 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 the way they've done that is that their um, the condition for the SSPL server side is if you're offering the database as a service and it's the new infrastructure management software which you have to provide. So that means that if another cloud provider, a cloud service, for example, as I said, for a warehouse management, which is not really database management software, but it uses the database in the normal manner, just like anybody else has used it. These people are not affected by the server side PL, okay, the SSPL. Does, does that answer the question? Um, I think there's doubt about that. There's doubt about that, but as there always is with any of the GPL family, is 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 using the software, is connecting to a database, you know, creating a, a work that's based on the database. Now, this is the big debate we had with MySQL and the, and the MySQL connectors uh, and the fork they had with Marie and all that, you know, and an and argument of, you know, if, if we're just using the database, not even as a library, it's, it's an external database, and there may, may be one of many databases available. Does that create a whole thing? Is the whole thing a work based on MySQL on, on GPL? Therefore, the whole thing has to go um, copy left, which is you know, great for the community, not good if you're you know, a software vendor and trying to sell licenses. Mm 